Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and today we're going to be doing a really pretty holiday ornament. I've been practicing. There's stuff all over the table. I do have some holiday idea books. These two are available on Amazon and on Teespring. And this is my brand new holiday idea pack that just came out on Teespring. So we've got all kinds of ornaments, ideas, card ideas. So if you're interested, check out the iCard up above and information down below. This is another one of those videos where I'm not going to edit. I'm doing it straight through as a, like it was live. So here we go. I am really excited. I wanted to share with you a couple things that I figured out to start off with. And one of those was that my um, background was really hard to put in. I started off with black paper, okay? So this is black watercolor paper, just like this, Stonehenge. And it's pretty and it's very, uh, very rich colors on these uh, baubles, but it was hard to get a smooth design. So then I went and found some of this Bristol. This is the Koinor Bristol vellum. It's very, it's not super smooth. It's really smooth, but not completely smooth. You know what I mean? And I did my ornaments this way, colored pencil, and I had put black bars going down the sides and then did my bokeh and I colored around all of those stupid little bokeh dots with black alcohol marker. So this one was done with the Everblend black marker. And yeah, it was less than satisfactory. It's, I mean, I was able to get a fairly decent colored in background and really it's cute, but coloring around those stupid dots with a pen no way. So then I moved on and went to using the Turner acrylic gouache. That's these guys here. And I drew my circle, painted the gouache in the background first, and then did the ornament. Now that's okay. And that looks, kind of, that looks pretty, but I want you to see here. I had to do a lot of covering up and repairing to get this to be back into a circle because I was not as careful with how I put my gouache down. Things I like about it, this gouache is very matte. It's not shiny. And the only shine that you get is a little bit of shine there, a little bit of shine from the wax colored pencil. I was using my Prismacolors. So, you know, um, but this was getting me closer to what I wanted to do. So then last night on the same white paper, I used the Turner acrylic gouache. I only used the black on this one. So you can see the, the difference in the background. And what I did first was I colored my ornament first. I drew a circle, colored the ornament, and then painted the black in after it was dry, I colored in the bokeh. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a game changer. So then I tested this morning because I wanted to see if the um, Hemi gouache, the, the cheap, you know, big palette of jelly cup gouache would work. And again, it was okay, but this, I didn't realize that Hemi gouache is, has a glare to it it has a shininess to it. And if I hadn't been doing the other gouache, I probably wouldn't have noticed so much, but the Turner acrylic gouache was super, super black, super, super velvety. And the Hemi gouache was not. Although I did enjoy doing the ornament in the same order draw it on, color it, put the gouache in on the background, do the bokeh. So that's the path we're going to take. And just 
because I had another kind of acrylic gouache floating around here. I didn't do an actual ornament on it, but I used the Holbein acrylic gouache and it's, it's perfect also. And since my Turner acrylic gouache is getting low, I wanted to make sure I had another tube. So there we are. This is just as black, maybe slightly less black, maybe slightly more gray for the Holbein gouache, but not enough that it's going to make any difference in the finished cards. So let's get started doing this because I want to get this done and scheduled for you guys. I have been um, really excited by the by the comments that people have been leaving that they like this kind of straight through sort of like in sort of sort of like a live but not quite live i am going to do this one as a red ornament and i have a couple tricks for us first one up get your ornament and make it grayscale so i just got my got my ornament and I made it grayscale so I would be able to see the you know where the darker color should be this this one right here this red one I did from imagination and you can tell because the shadows aren't quite right on the grayscale version the shadow comes up higher and it comes across farther this highlight is actually over to the side and there's a secondary highlight down lower that's just the lights in the room it could be just one highlight that's not a problem but i just want to make sure to get the highlight and shadow in the right place i do like this type of cap on my ornaments and so that's what i'm going to do instead of the fancy schmancy one but there we go first step I'm going to put the uh, red one up here now so you can see what the red bobble looks like. And I want to put them side by side so you can kind of see how looking at the color map or looking at the tone map here, you're able to see you're able to see those highlights and shadows the shadow that's around here the highlight that's around there without any color information by doing it without the color you can by doing it without the color yeah <laughs> you can actually do it in any color you could do this in turquoise you could do this in whatever bright colors make your make you happy but i am looking at this when I am looking at this. So I'm going to have both of them up on the screen. The ornament is off of Unsplash. So, you know, and I'll have a link to the, to the ornament itself. I'm going to use my circle template and I'm going to draw my ornament on here. <sighs> yeah. Again, we're doing this semi live <laughs> and I'm only going to put one ornament on the on the card and I am going to grab the reds this mahogany or Tuscan red the uh, mahogany red my raspberry I'm just grabbing all of the reds poppy permanent red and scarlet lake and uh, the white and I need to sharpen my white this is the sharpener that I was using so it's the jar link and you can adjust how pointy one is all the way pointy to uh, up to three, which is really blunt. I think that's the way it goes. Anyway, three is not really blunt. Let me see. Maybe one is. Let's find out. Oh, no. One is super, sh super sharp. Three has a blunt end on it, which is actually what you want to do with Prismacolors. You don't want to have the sharpest point. Oh, and I do want to have out the, where is it? The indigo blue, because that is my shadow. <laughs> that is my shadow enhancer. And 
Let's just, I'll grab this one too. We'll just have that sitting there when we're coloring. So starting off, I need to put this ornament on. I'm going to have it kind of down. My paper is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. It's going to go on to a card base. I am going to use one of those reds or maybe a pink. I'll just give it a pink. I think you can see the pink. Yep, you can see the pink. And then I'm going to, I draw the neck on the, the bobble neck, the bobble neck. <laughs> Sounds like a, a funny looking sweater, doesn't it? And then I will use, there's a putty color that I like to kind of draw the cap in with. It sort of gives that metallic look. I don't use metallics on any of these. I'm just going to, they, they end up looking kind of metallic. Once you put that black background in and you put all your shadows in, yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that top put on there. This is a 90% warm gray. I'm going to put that as the shadow underneath. I'm not putting the little loop, the little loop on the top. That's going to go on after. So that way you don't have to worry about painting around it. I'm all about not painting around things right now. So there we go. We're going to go in and I'm going to put my area of highlight. I'm going to put a white right down on. This is very similar to doing the doodle gems. So if you're really interested in how to color things that have shine and shadow, the doodle gems are awesome for that. And you get a little bit of, um, a little bit of coloring, quiet time, all that good stuff. I do want to take the, doo -doo -doo -doo, let's see here, Tuscan Red. I think I'm going to take the Tuscan Red and I'm going to put that in. Looking at this, we have a lot of shadow. So I'm looking at this. We have a an area of shadow. I'm using my pencil very lightly that kind of comes down around here. It comes across here for this really dark shadow. It goes all the way across, comes down and then is a, up on the bottom. This is our darkest shadow and I will be working this in a couple ways but first off I just want to get this Tuscan red down and even though I use that pink on the outside it will be fine because it helps me to see where I'm going and we're gonna go ahead and put this on the side view. So I'm holding back on my pencil. I'm not pressing down hard. This is very similar to coloring in the candle on the black paper that we did. I do want to keep my edges soft. I don't want, as they go into this ball, I don't want any really hard, you know, don't, don't go coloring in, whoops, don't go coloring in really hard like this because it makes it super hard to uh, to blend that in afterwards. So keep your keep your pencil soft and light. Use the pencil to uh, go over itself to build to build up the the tone when you're working on something small like this the hanger neck area it's easy to get dark really quick but then I'm just going to keep coloring and this is a very you know kind of calm and meditative thing to do you don't have to worry about anything going on in life when you're grabbing out your pencils and just starting to color now if you don't want to watch the whole coloring process in real time you can 
either speed up well you can speed up the video you just go to the little gear underneath of the video and speed it up if you're on a phone i think that it's on the three dot um, menu underneath of the video there's like three dots and when you're starting off you're going to see a lot of the white from the paper underneath that's okay you could even just color it super light and not go to the to as dark as that this is all on the same paper so it's pretty fun and you can get a very realistic, you know, colored sphere. Truthfully, that's all these are. If, if you took an art class and they had you coloring spheres with light and shadow, that's all we're doing. And this is a really good way to practice that skill and have something at the end that you can use besides just a grayscale picture of a sphere. <laughs> I have so many picture, you know, versions of grayscale or even in color pictures of spheres. So I'm just building this color up and working my way in. This one's going to be a little bit longer than the candle. This is a bit more detail just because we're, we're having, you know, the background going in afterwards. I am going to go ahead and kind of circle around that that big spot and I am going to put that secondary highlight here. I didn't put any white on that secondary highlight. Where you have light, there has to be dark. So if you notice where that highlight is on the on the uh, red one right there, right next to it is really, really dark going down the side. So this edge right here is really dark. Need to back off my pencil a little bit. I have to remind myself of that too. I am not a um, professional color pencil artist. I am a professional artist that uses colored pencil. <laughs> so if you really want to learn colored pencil, uh, Lacry Fine Arts is amazeballs. So I am in awe of people who can make such big realistic. I tend to be a one and done type of person. I don't tend to work on a project like this for days. I I like to get in, get my project done, and get out. But if you love coloring longer projects and stuff, I do have lots of coloring books on Amazon. And I'm starting to share some of my videos on uh, shorts. So keep an eye out for some shorts videos of some of these projects because I know a lot of people don't really have a lot of time and really I try to do my shorts in a way that you get all of the important information. You just don't get the chatter and you don't get the, uh, the progression as seamlessly. You know, there's, there's more jumps in a, in a shorts video. I am going to lay down the Tuscan red. I am going to grab something that's a little more red. I am picking up the Scarlet and I'm going back into that Tuscan red area and laying in some of the Scarlet. And just like on the candle where I had put the yellow ochre down and then did a double wide version of the yellow ochre and then move forward into the emptier space after I had done left some of the yellow ochre then I went in and I over colored the yellow ochre with a red that kind of a thing that's what I'm doing here is I'm 
I put down a color, I'm going over it, building up more color. I do rotate my pencil as I'm going along. That as I'm rotating my pencil, I'm keeping, there's actually a point on here still. Even though I've been coloring for quite a while, my pencils don't get worn down to the dull nubbin as quickly because I rotate my pencil as I'm going, which keeps a fairly sharp point. You do want your pencils to be fairly sharp so that they can get down into the down into the crevices and you know surface of the paper, that top top layer. We're just going to keep going. We're going to build the colors. It makes it richer. And then when you put that black on there, I mean, whoa, when you put the black on, <laughs> it just, that black background makes these guys pop. And I'll show you some tricks as we're doing the black background. I'm going to pull some of this orange right in over that white. I call this orange. This is really scarlet. It's a very warm red. The Tuscan red, it almost has a blue undertone down deep. But as you take your time and you layer up, your colors get richer, they get more intense. So something you can do with this, after you've done, you've colored one, if you've got a good inkjet printer and some photo paper, matte photo paper, you can take a picture of your image, take a picture of this, and print it out on matte photo paper. And you will have copies of your art that you can then cut out and put onto your cardstock for your cards as a, you know, you hand colored the original and maybe somebody special gets your original, but then everybody else is still special. So they still get a card made from your hand-drawn art. And that's a really fun way to do it. And if you put it on best quality on, on your matte photo paper, it's hardly distinguishable from the original. If you put it on glossy, it, you know, it's the colors will be more intense, but you'll have a gloss on it and it doesn't feel quite as hand created. So if you wanted to do this in a different color way, you know, say you wanted to do the blue, you would pick a dark blue, a light blue and a medium blue. You can, you know, pick other colors in, in between also. So I might end up putting, you know, more than three colors on here, but I'm going to try and keep it pretty much three colors. And I do tend to go a little bit quiet when I am coloring just because it is my happy place. You notice I don't stay in one spot the entire time. I don't work an area until it's absolutely perfect. I kind of jump around. That way I don't end up <laughs> wearing holes in my paper, you know? It's kind of hard to wear holes in your paper with a colored pencil, but if you sit there and you keep coloring over one spot the entire time and you don't develop it all together, you can get something that's very uneven. And I'm trying to get this to work into a smooth transition. So that's, um, that just takes time. 
building up your layers and you can only build up your layers of colored pencil so much before it just starts rubbing off you know basically all you're doing is lifting the color underneath so you need to be careful on that too i picked up the poppy red So far, we've used the Tuscan Red, the Scarlet, and the Poppy Red. Poppy Red and Scarlet are very close to each other in value, meaning how light or dark they are, but they're different enough in uh, hue. The, you know, how red or blue or yellow something is or the mixture of those. So something I'm going to do right now, is I am going to start to burnish a little bit, which just means I'm putting a little bit more pressure on here. I'm adding a little bit more color, but what I wanna do is bring in, actually bring in a little bit of that up here. I want to bring in the white and kind of burnish with the white to start diffusing that area around my highlights because look at that as soon as you do that it starts making it feel more real so I'm just bringing in that highlight I'm going to do the same thing up here there is white already on the paper and so when I do this, it's going to sort of smear it in just a little bit. That's part of that highlight look is that the light is dulled. There's a glow. And I am being much more bold with my highlights here. Right now, I am going to pull a little bit of the, let's see, that's the poppy red. I'm going to brush some of that right in. I say brush. Painting and colored pencil are very similar and many people call colored pencil art pencil painting. Especially with like these waxy soft colored pencils like Prismacolor because your colors can blend together as you mush them with your other colors. So I'm going to just Pull that in because I don't want it to be totally white. I want it to have a bit of a glow to it of other color. So I'm letting it pick up some of the color from around it and pulling it in because if you look at that reference, it's not totally white. Putting some white up here, just to blend. That's starting to look like a Christmas ball. I'm grabbing the Scarlet Lake again, and I'm burnishing some more. Starting to make it look more and more smooth, less and less color pencil. This is still going to have a color pencil effect to it because I am not going to spend, you know, six hours on a card. I'm going to spend, you know, half an hour on a card, 45 minutes on a card, especially if I'm doing it as a, you know, card to use and make um, copies of. You know, this is a, this is a standard holiday bauble so you know you use whatever you've got if you've got some holiday baubles you like the color of work on coloring and matching the colors so I do want to take that Tuscan red again and really be 
open up that outside shadow but I'm not doing it as an outline it's not a, a solid outline there's a solid color but it's not a hard outline I didn't just draw a hard hard line around because there's light and there's reflections and you just the more and more you observe the more and more real something starts to look having a reference really helps when you're laying in all of those extra colors but you can do you know once you've done several you can start imagining where that light goes where the light would fall where the shadow falls I am continuing to push this push this shadow a little bit farther in because I keep looking at that reference going that shadow comes up higher that darker color comes up higher Let's grab that raspberry the raspberry but I'm getting to the point of my colors are pretty much as dense as I can get them on this paper. So now what I will do is I will grab a colorless blender. All this is is the clear wax uh, with the binder in a pencil, just like the um, colored pencils, but when you use a colorless blender like this, it basically burnishes the surface. It leaves some of the wax, so you may need to use a tissue. And let's see, you may need to, to use a tissue to, um, uh, there, there you go. Now you can kind of see that wax bloom that's starting to show up on there. You can use a tissue to buff the surface and even that all out. But I won't do that till I'm done because when you even it out, it completely fills in all of the tooth completely. So I do want to see if I can move some of the color around. Sometimes you can move the color around a little bit, like with a paintbrush. And yes, if I had odorless mineral spirits, I could blend my colors. I've got plenty of layers on here. I could blend them. I don't have any. So I am just going to use the blending tool that I have. I could use the blending stump. I don't think that it's going to give me, well, yeah, actually the blending stump is working some. It's, it's actually peeling down through my colors a bit. I don't want to do that. Get some wax back on there. But you can get a much smoother, gradiated blend with the colorless blender or with the odorless mineral spirits. I've never had good luck using baby oil. Um, I have mineral oil I could do this with, but like I said, I've never really had very good luck using baby oil. I'm just softening that up. I want to go sort of round and round and round. And then bring it in. And now I, I can see that I'm starting to get these little crumbs. There's little crumbs of color starting to show up. And I don't want to 
I don't want to smear them around, so I will grab a little brush. This is just a soft, like, wash brush. I don't do anything that big. <laughs> oh, that looks so pretty. I am tickled by that. Now, we're going to grab the... This is the indigo. I'm going to put a little bit of indigo on the on the cap a little bit underneath the cap I'm going to put a bit of that indigo because now that I've sort of burnished it down with the with the colorless blender I can put a little bit of this really dark indigo blue I like to use the indigo blue instead of a black when I'm doing sh my shadows on color like this just because it uh, has a little bit more life to it. It feels a little more environmental. Black just tends to deaden things down. All right. I am going to do this as a premiere. And so if you're coming in after the premiere is over, I'm trying to do premieres where we can get together and chat and visit. So stop on by next time there's, there's a premiere. Make sure that you click that like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you really like what I've done, and you're not a patron over on Patreon already, you can click that um, super thanks and uh, show me that you really like this by letting me know. <laughs> I think that that is probably, oh, that looks so real. Look at that. It looks so real. So, you know, a little bit of time. You can do things like this. You really can. There we go. Oh, that's so pretty. So what I want to do now is go ahead and put the black background in. And I'm just going to lay this on top of a palette. And I think this one is going to be the... Turner acrylic gouache for the background. Like I said, you can use colored, you can use colored pencils. You could color the whole background in with color pencil. You could color the whole background in with the alcohol marker. It works. It works. And it's easier to do when you only have the one thing to color around. So if you don't have gouache and you do have alcohol markers, color the background in with alcohol marker. I'm going to do gouache. I am going to use a kind of a stiff brush that kind of comes down to a bit of a point so that I can get around my ornament. Then I'll take a flat brush. So this is a round that I'm going to use to paint in a round my whoops I need to pick up all those pencils and get them off before yeah <laughs> before I start doing this because I don't want them to roll across the background anyhow yeah this is what lives are like with me come on this fuzzy there we go Ooh. Such a pretty dark. Now, the only problem, really, when you are putting in a background like this is that your colored, your colored pencil piece could end up looking a little bit like it is cut out and pasted down. I may have to get a different brush. Might be able to get my way through this one though. I 
you just have to be slow and careful when you're going around it. I mean, I'm not perfect when I'm lining around something like this. So, you know, just do your best. It doesn't help that I'm talking as I'm doing this. And you could do it where you don't even put the full, you know, paint the whole background black. You could just paint it right up close around the ornament. Your choice. Your, uh, I have to be careful. I've got black on the side of my hand now. So I'm painting with this paint a little bit thicker than I intended. Put a little bit of water on that. I guess I'm painting it in with this instead of going to my flat. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm gonna go to the filbert. I've got a filbert sitting here. I'm going to grab that. So am I taking too long doing this? If you like this style of kind of live-like with very little edits, there might be one or two here and there, but very few edits. I'm trying to get this up today. Why did I put more paint on that? I was gonna go to the filbert. There we go. There, oh yeah, see the filbert is a much smoother brush. I probably could have done the whole thing with it. It's just that it doesn't have a point, so it doesn't go into the into those little crevices around the ornament. And so much for trying to keep my my base paper white. I just splatted paint out there. Oh well. You know? Best laid plans. Best laid plans. But this paint is really nice and opaque and it really does dry to a soft velvety finish and right now it does look kind of like my ornament is cut out but I am going to going to fix that a little bit and if you don't want any streaks in your background dry it go back and do another do another coat of paint. I am going to dry this real quick. So there we go. We are, yep, we're dry. Now I do want some bokeh, those little fun little dots on here. And I'm going to I think I'm going to do it very similarly to this one. So I've got red, a yellow, and white. And these are actually not metallic colors on here. It is red, yellow, and white. <laughs> so we're going to grab the, grab the white. We're going to grab kind of an orangey color, I think, maybe, and the red color. Maybe a different red color. Go with the poppy red. And yeah, I do want the yellow. So, 
we've got this yellow to orange and I'm going to choose a small-ish dot and I'm going to just put my put that yellow right on there right on top of the black and it looks like gold so what size did I use Actually, that's one smaller, but that's okay. I'll just keep doing this one now. The bokeh dots are really quite fun. And put them on in random locations. And so now I am going to put my white bokeh on here. We will put the the little hanger Ooh. okay I kind of shifted a little bit we will put the hanger on the top of the ornament it's super easy but I want to get these bokeh dots on here first I think that one's going to be the be an overlap so I just overlapped whoops let's go for a bigger dot <laughs> see how you just you just adjust you just adjust where's my little brush get those get those little crumbs off out of the way and I'm going to say there's right up against look at that right up against it and I think going off the edge and then we have our red and that is going to be we're going to go right up here and it is amazing how these colors when they're over the black really do start looking like metallic colors that yellow orange looks so much like gold this red actually looks like a bronze I think that's enough of that so we'll put that out of the way get our little brush I do want to around the uh, around this edge you can see how this is softened up versus this what I'm going to do is first take just one of the the colors and it really doesn't matter which one because by coloring over that line of that light it's almost like there's a A little bit of a highlight that's slipping around Oops. I'm kind of slipping way over that's okay you can actually scrape up a little bit of the paint with your pencil tip so kind of be careful or not you know it's all up to you. You can put a little bit of that red up in there. See how that's starting to come in and look a little more like it's 
cohesive. I'm actually taking a tiny touch of white and some of these places just hitting just the tiniest little edge over the paint. Tiniest little edges. It just adds to the to the shine. And then take that indigo blue and maybe in some of those places where I did that white, if I take the blue over it, it softens it. It dulls that little highlight down. Doesn't make it go away completely, but it dulls it down and it just joins things together. So now we're going to put our super high or super dark right under the edge of the cap. All right, and then we're going to grab a, mm, yeah, I'll grab that. This is the putty color. I'm gonna make a little U shape here at the top, upside down U shape. I'll take that indigo color pencil and put it down where it connects at the cap because the that U shape is back farther in the middle of the cap. And then I will grab a, this is the slate gray and I'm just going to use it to, I'm gonna come down and making a hook. can do different things. This one I did a string. That one I'm doing a hook. All depends on what hits your fancy at the moment. Take that indigo and put it on either side of the hook on the the, the little loop area. I'm going to put a highlight on the top of that and on the outside, put a little highlight on the hook. Just whatever makes you happy. Don't, you know, don't stress about it. If your highlight gets a little too strong, take your gray back over it. Boom. There we go. All right. And then choose a color that makes sense to you and put your little signature on it. I happen to have a little glyph that I like. And there we go. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Remember to check out my Amazon bookshop for the cute and creative winter ornaments. This is a whole bunch of winter ornaments that were all done live on YouTube. So you can find all these videos here on YouTube. This is the Cozy and Creative Designs. More about food and taking care of yourself, tea, coffee, cozy stuff, and the holiday idea pack. Because you know, you need sometimes you just need ideas. And this is a downloadable on Teespring. Uh, these are downloadable too. So if you want them today, you can just download them. The idea pack has so many fun designs in it. And I do have holiday baubles right here. This bobble tree that I did in my four card lesson with the bobble tree and the um, bottle brush tree. 
these little guys. I'm going to do a class on this one probably for Monday, maybe, maybe. But these little guys are some of my favorite tumbling star people. You've got all kinds of designs. This is my little, my little gnome that I like to do. I'm probably going to do him as a standalone lesson also. Anyway, there's lots of stuff in here to make cards, to make ornaments yourself. They also work really well as embroidery patterns. So check them out on Teespring. And remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. And that's not even the right one. There it is. Look at that. Different ornaments, different times of day, and they all work. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment and let me know what's going on in your life. And if you're doing any cards for the holidays, take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.